Chapter 24 The next morning they were awakened early so they could get down to the ship in time for boarding. Signora Giuselo had draped the front doorway in black silk, marking a death in the house. The new bishop, just transferred from Milan, had seen the doorway on his morning stroll, and though it was not normally done, he stopped in to inquire about the deceased. He and Father Tommaso prayed together for Salvatore's soul. Meanwhile, the boys had gathered under the arbor for their breakfast. The bishop does us the greatest honor in paying a visit, Dominic heard Signor Giuselo whisper to her husband as she laid the table with sweet cakes and fruit. Sitting there in the soft morning light, Dominic felt as if they had woken from a bad dream. If he closed his eyes, he could pretend that it was yesterday. They listened to the bees buzzing overhead, just as they had done the day before. The birds were singing their familiar songs, and the sun was warm and comforting as it had been yesterday morning. It was almost as if everything was the same. But Dominic knew that inside the house something was very different. It was there, in the little sitting room, that the still, lifeless body of Salvatore lay waiting for burial. The women had washed him and combed his hair. Dominic and Francesco had taken Antonio in to see him, but Antonio was so upset that he had run from the room crying. He just couldn't believe that his brother would never wake up again. Even now, after they had finally settled him down under the arbor, Antonio kept looking back toward the house. Dominic knew he was waiting for Salvatore to come walking through the doorway. Dominic himself almost expected to hear that familiar laugh and the excited talk about roping buffalo and eating linguine under the stars. Even Violetta seemed inconsolable, for she had gone under the table and would not come out. Father Tommaso and the bishop joined the others at the table. Dominic watched as the bishop dusted his chair with a handkerchief before he, pull, he pulled from his sleeve before sitting down. Taking the utmost care, the bishop placed his fine silk hat on the bench beside him. Such a fine hat, your lordship, Signora Giusello commented. Grazie, Signora, thank you, the bishop replied with a satisfied smile. With a haughty sniff, he surveyed the boys and brought his handkerchief to his nose as if he had smelled something bad. In a strained voice, he began to speak about the salvation of Salvatore's soul. Francesco sat grim-faced while Antonio dipped his finger into a dish of jam. The bishop frowned. This was followed by a soft burp from under the table. Upon hearing this, the bishop raised his eyebrows and the boys stifled their giggles. Signora Giuselo changed the sub quickly changed the subject to church steeples. Grateful for the diversion, the grown-ups all turned in their seats to look at the steeple in the distance. It was then that Dominic heard a familiar nibbling sound and noticed that the bishop's hat was missing from the bench. He quickly kicked Francesco, who slipped under the table to retrieve the silk hat, which he quietly returned to the bench. Father Tommaso was anxious to leave for the ship, and the boys were just as anxious to leave before bishop, the bishop discovered the remains of his hat. After a rushed goodbye, they were on their way. And as they hurried along the cobblestone streets toward the dock, Dominic heard a faint cry coming from under the arbor that sounded like, My hat! My hat! Francesco had tied a rope around Violetta's neck to keep her safe as she trotted along beside him. All along the street, people talked excitedly about America and the ship, the new Amsterdam. Dominic smiled at the sound of it. America. He realized for the first time... He realized for the first time since he had come how much he missed his own country, and he was suddenly overwhelmed by homesickness. As much as he loved the countryside of Avaletto and the friendship he had found, he longed to see his familiar streets of Brooklyn. But as happy as he had been about going back to America, he couldn't help but feel the sadness that hung over the group now, the sadness of leaving Salvatore behind the sadness of Salvatore's dream of going to America that could never come to be. On reaching the pier, Dominic discovered that theirs was not the only difficult departure. Everywhere, people cried and shouted goodbyes. 
Old women wrung their hands, and grown men wailed like babies. Dominic remembered the ranger back at the museum saying that Ellis Island was known as the Island of Hope and also as the Island of Tears. Now he saw how the tears could start bef even before the immigrants left their homelands. Slowly they made their way past the many little stalls selling clothes, baskets, boxes, and anything travelers might need for their journey across the ocean. They waited for fa with Father Tommaso in one long line and then another, nervously eyeing the crowd. If the Padrone's men had gone up north to look for them, they had nothing to worry about. But if they had changed their minds and headed south, Francesco would be in grave danger. After what seemed like hours, Father Tommaso finally handed their tickets to an agent, along with their papers. Dominic smiled at Antonio, who squeezed his hand. An agent inspected their papers. Violetta tried to eat his suit shoelaces. This is as far as the animal goes, the agent ordered in a gruff voice, shifting his foot from her reach. But she meant no harm, Francesco tried to explain. No animals on board, the agent snapped. But she's with me, Francesco told him. Makes no difference, he replied. No animals allowed. She wouldn't know how to get along without me, Francesco pleaded. We've never been apart, not one night. She wouldn't sleep or eat without me. Who could love her the way I do? The shipping agent shrugged. You don't understand, Father Tommaso insisted, taking the agent's arm. The boy has a ticket for America, and she belongs to him. Surely he'd be allowed to take her with him. She's a very well-behaved goat. The agent shook his head. Sorry, Father. Passengers are not allowed to take animals. If they allowed animals, there would be no room for people. It's a big boat, but it isn't an ark. Ah, such nonsense. One small goat, who would care? Father Tommaso grumbled as he waved his hand in the air. Then he turned to Francesco, whose face froze when he heard the agent's words. Move forward now and leave the goat behind. <laughs>